Hi everybody, in this video we will be discussing the importance of the NCRTs for NEET Physics. This is part 2 of this series on NEET Physics. I will link the video of part 1 in the description box below. So let's come to the most important question. Is NCRT theory important for NEET? So before I begin with this, uh, I would like to tell you that you should go and read the Physics NCRT only once you are thorough with your concepts and you have practiced your previous year questions. The NCRT for Physics is not a very easy book to understand and you wouldn't get it in the first go if you start off with it right away. So you should firstly clear your concepts and then come to this to boost your score. Now coming to the main question. So I would not suggest you to go for the derivations, they are way too lengthy and not that useful for need. Of course it's great if you could have an idea, but just take an overview and skip the rest. Now coming to the summary, the points to ponder, they are extremely important, there have been direct questions from these lines. Also, you should not overlook the important theory points, especially the applications of certain laws, the uses, etc. And the graphs are very important. You shouldn't miss out on any graph, whether it's in the NCRT theory, whether it's in the in-text exercise, all of the graphs are very important. So we will look at some sample questions which were di from direct lines of NCRT. So the first one came in NEED 2020, which asks for the graph that represents the variation of resistivity with temperature. As you can see, this is exactly from NCRT and if you hadn't read it, it would have been a difficult question to solve. The second question came this year itself, that is in NEET 2022, where the statement 2 says that Biosabot's law is analogous to Coulomb's inverse square law, with the former being related to field produced by a scalar source while the latter being produced by a vector source. So clearly the statement 2 is incorrect because NCRT mentions exactly otherwise which says that the electrostatic field is produced by a scalar source and the magnetic field is produced by a vector source. So this could have been a tough nut to crack if you hadn't read NCRT once again. Now the next question, need 2019, in which of the following devices the eddy current effect is not used. As I mentioned, you should go through the uses and applications of laws very carefully. So again, a direct question from NCRT. NCRT clearly mentions the uses of eddy currents that is magnetic breaking, electromagnetic damping, induction furnace and power meters. Again, here are some more questions. The first one from ray optics, direct question from the NCRT theory, the second one from semiconductors, the third one uh, related to rainbow formation, again given as a separate paragraph, as an application of uh, all the optical phenomena that you have read uh, in the chapter ray optics. And the fourth one, again from current electricity, there is a table given in current electricity which, men which mentions that the alpha for conductors is positive. That is, their resistance increases with increase in temperature and the alpha for semiconductors is negative. So you should be able to derive information and gather information from all the tables given in NCRT. They will not explicitly mention every piece of information, but it's important that you read the cable tables very carefully. So now I'll show you how I marked NCRT ko kaise mark kara tha for a theoretical chapter like semiconductors. So, first of all, the range of conductivity for metals, semiconductors and insulators is very important. है. Then, elemental and compound semiconductors ke examples. After that, these diagrams should be clear, which has shown the conduction and valence band ke ka gap hai, again for metals, insulators and semiconductors. After that, last year, a data-based question bhi aaya tha semiconductors, se, so all the data is here important. Hai. Jaise ki kitna gap hota hai conduction aur valence band ke beech alag alag elements ke liye jaise silicon, germanium etc. To ye uh, data yaad rakhna important hai. At least aapko range ka idea hona chahiye is case mein. Then uske alawa jo yahan par uh, After that jitne bhi graphs diye hoye NCRT mein wo extremely important hai. Jaise solar cell ka graph hai aur ispe based already a question aa chuka hai. So, this way, the graphs are very important. Hai. Then, solar cell ko uh, construct karne ke liye kaun sa material use karna chahiye. Wo is in text exercise ke answer mein diya hai. So, again, this is also very important. After that, you will see graphs in transistors. It is very important. Hai. Jaise input graph, output graph, input characteristic, output characteristic, and how to resistance kaise calculate karte. Wo bhi NCRT mein kuch examples ke through explained. Hai. To wo bhi karna hai. Then after that, this graph is the transistor ka, ki wo switch ki tarah kaise use kiya jata hai, amplifier ki tarah kaise use karte hai, wo important hai. Aur iske regions bhi kaafi important hai ki kaun sa region cut off hai, kaun sa active hai, aur kaun sa saturation region hai. Uske baad, jo bhi summary of points to ponder mein important points thai, mene unhe bhi mark kiya tha, jaise ki ye wala point summary mein, and then points to ponder mein uh, feedback oscillations ke baare mein mention tha, to usko bhi mene 
मार्क किया था आफ्टर दैट जितने भी एमसीक्यू क्वेश्चन एक्सरसाइज में होते हैं वो एक्सट्रीमली इंपॉर्टेंट होते हैं तो ये जितने भी एमसीक्यू क्वेश्चन थे वो मैंने सोल्व करे थे और ये कंसेप्चुअल uh, क्लैरिटी के लिए भी काफी अच्छे Now coming to the second important question are NCERT exercises important so before i begin with this i'd like to highlight that it's important that you look at statement based and assertion reason questions also even when you're reading the theory of physics from NCERT so we'll come to the exercises now so firstly the additional exercise i think it's a very high level as compared to neat so you shouldn't do it i mean you need not do it and coming to the exercise questions definitely do the theoretical ones and do not ignore the in text questions and blue boxes so this is one graph that was given in the in text questions it's not given anywhere in the theory of ncert in the text but this exactly came in neat so all the graphs are important no matter where they're coming from this question an exercise question came exactly in neat the exact same question now uh, this is a blue box which mentions an activity and a question based on this as well came in one of my mock tests i've put it here so this activity mentions that the spring shrinks with a jerk when the current is switched on and this is the exact question that came over here so this is an assertion reason question that came in section b in neat 2022 The assertion is that the stretching of a spring is determined by the shear modulus of the material of the spring. Now you can clearly see that the exact same question is in the exercise of NCERT as well under the chapter solids. So as I mentioned before too, it's important that you look at all the theoretical questions that can be formed from the exercise of NCERT. And then the last numerical, it's also a neat previous year question. So I hope this video was helpful in clearing your doubts regarding the importance of NCERT and its exercises, the additional exercises, and all of that. If you have any other questions related to the NCERTs for physics, please leave them in the comment section, and I'll surely reply to all of them. Thank you so much for watching this video.